everybody. My name is Naya and I'm the Black Female Engineer. I provide content for new and aspiring software engineers. And today we're talking about side hustles. Yes, side hustles. Just because you're making 100K a year doesn't mean you wouldn't want another 10,000 a year, 2,000 a year, 500 bucks a year, you know? And I know there are some that a lot of people hear all the time. And so I'm actually going to make sure to really start off with unique ones that you may not have heard before. Really all the tips I'm going to give you all can be done by yourself or with in partnership with a specific company or agency. So let's get to it. Number one, one great side hustle that you can get into is administering mock interviews. A mock interview is basically a fake interview designed for people who are looking to get practice in for their interviews, whether it be behavioral or technical, get that real time practice in and talk with another person. So a lot of times people can't talk to their moms, their brothers, or a mirror like this. They need an actual person to stay accountable. I really like this one for two reasons. One, you get paid. You know, that's great. When you get paid and two, if you are a person who you know you're about to start job hunting or you just want to find ways to develop your skill sets, this can be a great way to do so. By making sure that you are prepped for helping this person, you're also bettering your own development skills. There are a thousand ways to complete the exact same problem and so even if you already know the ins and outs or you think you already know the ins and outs and you think you know the exact way to solve the problem and whatnot the people may surprise you and teach you a little something which is great getting paid and also getting that self-development and learning as well and so this you can very much do it by yourself you can say yo i am naya and i am administering mock interviews for 40 dollars for 30 minutes or for an hour which is actually pretty good because mock interviews can cost anywhere from like 65 to like 150 dollars and so no that actually is a pretty great maybe i should do it that sounds like a pretty great rate and so you can do that or you can go and sign up on more quote unquote legitimate websites and businesses. However, there obviously would be cuts to the amount you make because they too need to make money. The second side hustle that you very much can get into is domain flipping. Now this is so domain flipping slash like not. So domain flipping, I'm sure, especially if you're a software engineer or interested in the tech field, you probably know what it is, but I'll give you a definition anyway. So domain flipping is you buy up a domain name. So I don't even know. Google.com is not yet a thing. And you're like, you know what would be a cool domain name is Google. So you can use sites like GoDaddy or Bluehost. You don't have to buy it now, but you can just see if it's available through sites like those and a bunch of numerous other sites. And you type it in and you see, oh, wow, it actually is not taken well would you look at that and you may have you know may have come from the future and think you know what this is going to be worth a lot of money one day let me purchase this domain name for one dollar a month yeah domain names can be as low as one dollar a month two dollars a month depending on the name and how you know popular um it seems to be and so you're like you know what okay one dollar a month i think i can squeeze it and you press purchase and there you go you now are the owner of google.com now three days later we'll look at that your timing was impeccable three days later a person will call him, I don't know, Larry. Larry is like, you know what? Yes, the name of this new company is gonna be called Google. He looks up to see if the domain name is available and he sees it is not. Well, cry not Larry, because you can purchase the name from little Billy Bob over there for X amount of dollars and you can set the amount of dollars you want to sell it for and whatnot and you can end up making a solid amount of 
cash. Now, of course, you probably are not going to magically stumble upon a domain name that just happens to be the same name of a multi-billion dollar company and whatnot, but you get the idea by simply buying up names that you think could be used in the future by people looking to start up companies or just get personal pages for themselves. You can actually earn a solid amount of change. I personally have purchased domain names that I don't really plan on using um, and I just looked before this video and they are worth between $400 and $1,300 depending on the name. I have a couple and depending on the name, they are worth in that range. Now, there's another side to this. If you stumble upon a domain name that you're actually kind of like shocked it's not taken. So let's say it's a trending topic or something that's just been very apparent right now specifically. You can purchase it and then choose to just set up Google AdSense. And so now when people go onto your one page and Google AdSense is there, now you earn money from that. And meanwhile, while you are holding on to this domain name, the domain can actually be ramping up in value in the meantime. And so you can be earning that passive income while also in the background it's increasing in value. Value. And so there are two ways to do this. And so I highly suggest at least looking at it. So the third side hustle that I kind of just tumbled upon, I didn't really realize how much I could make doing it until I really just, yeah, stumbled upon it, is QA testing for apps. Apps that people have developed and they are looking to see how other users interact with it, get insight and information from a user perspective of what the UI is like, what the UX user interface and the user experience feels like. Because when you're a developer and you're so deep into something, it gets kind of difficult to have that hat on of, okay, but how will the user interact with this? How will the user feel with this? Or because you've worked with something for so long, you don't notice the little things that again, users would. I've done user testing a couple of times now. And I remember I noticed this one thing with an app. Let's say I'm user testing for amazon.com. I want a new computer. And now there's the whole list of computers. I saw that I had to click on the specific name of the computer to get to the next page instead of clicking the general area the computer was on, the, the, the card of the computer. If you're a software engineer, you know what I mean by card. If you're not, then really I mean the general area of the computer I was looking at. And so yeah, clicking the picture, it didn't go to the page. Clicking around it didn't click, didn't go to that page. I had to select the specific words of MacBook Air in these little tiny fonts for it to go on the page. And so that was one of the first things I brought up because I did not like it at all. It's things like this that developers want to hear. And so, yeah, I did this a couple of times. If you look up just things like Craigslist and LinkedIn and Google and look up QA testing for apps and web apps, you definitely can find something. It's also kind of fun to do. It was fun to be so nitty gritty. I'm a very detail oriented person, so it was fun to look at this really cool idea for an app and go through it all and then just communicate my findings and call it a day instead of having to be the one to now fix it. I spent about 10 to 20 hours on both projects total, not per week or anything, just total and got a couple of hundred dollars from them. And so this can also be a great way to go. The next thing you can do is tutor. The thing with becoming a software engineer, especially not from a university is I feel like, I mean, please tell me if I'm wrong, I'd love to be wrong, but I feel like the resources available for people to get extra live help, not help via the internet, via Stack Overflow and all of these different sites, but live one-on-one -on -one help, they are pretty small. And so you can be a tutor. You can say like, yo, I am proficient in these things and these languages. Let me know if you need a tutor and let me know if you're self-teaching, if you're in a coding bootcamp, one hour session would be this amount and let's call it a day. And so that could also be really, really great. The only problem, problem, quote unquote problem with this is maybe the 
work you're putting into it because you really have to be attentive and um provide a great service because yo you're you may be the deciding factor between a person passing their coding challenges and assignments and a person you know not and so you really i would hope you want to be focused and so because of that it can feel a lot more strenuous than other side hustles however they can it can also be the most fulfilling side hustle because you're developing these relationships again you yourself could be learning with this person teaching is a great way for you to learn yourself especially when you know oh so, so i'm going to be teaching this subject tomorrow so let me go and make sure i'm good on it myself and now you're doing studying beforehand and learning new things as well. And so it can be the most fulfilling thing and such a great way to have your own personal and professional development. And it can, you can make quite a lot of money. Y'all seriously, you can make quite a lot of money again, especially because there are so few resources out there for live one-on-one -on -one help for people not in the college system. And if you know, having a person's future in your hands is not, you know, your cup of tea, then you can also go the solo route. Just doing your own freelance work. I know people have heard this time and time again, and I'm going to be the you know last one to share it to round out this video but you, i can't have this video without the known to all side hustle of freelancing your skills as a developer they are quite priceless and don't think you need to be the world's best developer to be able to freelance your services because people and especially people outside of the tech world they see tech as this big dark cloud that they want nothing to do with and so they are willing to pay top dollar for the most basic of pages and sites and web apps and so don't shy away from it just because you think you're not an expert and so don't knock it at least don't knock it for that reason but there we go everybody like i it is 2021 we are where we are and so i wanted to yeah provide you all with some tips and insights of side hustles you can do to keep things interesting to keep things fresh and keep some money in your wallet and gain that personal and professional development for yourself as well so i hope this was helpful please let me know if it was like subscribe and i'll see you all later bye